In the last couple of episodes, we talked about stepping into and awakening to possibilities, being able to dream and imagine a new life for yourself and changing those things in your life that you want to change. Then we talked about the rhythms of nature as creating a rhythmic way of living in this harmony according to how nature is around you. Today, I want to talk about fully embracing your inner power, stepping fully into and charging up the energies within. Let's go get that nugget. Hey guys, it's Jen Mack, Lady of the Mind. Welcome to today's episode where I hope I am finding you fully embracing your power. If you're not embracing your power, then it is my intention that in today's episode, I give you just one nugget of inspiration towards your transformation. I just realized as I started this one that the last couple of episodes, I didn't say that. I'm like, wait a second. (laughs) I'm missing my own little tagline. I think if I do change my podcast a little bit, I will miss saying that because I think it's this kind of um, memorable thing that I say and, you know, I run into people out and about and they're like, oh yeah, lady of the mind, you know, welcome to today's episode. And they talk about the nugget and stuff too. So I find that to be kind of fun and exciting. Anyhow, I just realized I didn't say that in the other two. Okay, moving on. So fully embracing your power. I I find this to be such a fun topic because so I find so many people just don't think that they that they have power or that they can step into something like this. And I find it to be this kind of defeated thing where I'm like, no, wait a second. No. You know, everybody has power. Everybody has this ability to to create the life that they want to lead. And they have choices. Everybody has choices. And so many people think they don't. Now, everybody has choices, but some choices have greater consequence. You know, if you have three kids under eight years old and you're married, but you don't want to be married anymore and you want to move to Alaska, yeah, you know, I think that those consequences could be pretty great and and maybe even detrimental. And it would be it would be kind of sad, you know, if all of a sudden this these these three young kids lost their mom because she just wanted to move to Alaska without them. So yeah, I get it. You know, that would be that would be quite challenging. But I think that there's ways to look at things. There's ways to take something. Well, here's here's well, here's an example. No, I don't want to say that. I I want to give you an example, but it's kind of like well, here's here's it's not it's not as powerful an example I was going to give, but that's okay. So my friend uh, told me like this analogy. She's like, it's kind of like you want a sandwich, but you keep saying you don't want the sandwich because the, and the purpose the the bottom line is that you don't like bread. Okay, well then you have to uncover what it is about the thing that you want. What is it at the base of the experience? So for example, I want a sandwich but I'm not going to eat the sandwich. Well, why not? Well, because I don't want to eat bread. Oh, well, guess what? You can have a sandwich without bread. Like the physical, the item of bread doesn't have to be what makes a sandwich. You could use lettuce. Amy just made these really great avocado rolls. It's like avocado, um, mozzarella cheese, and an egg, like a binding agent, an egg. And she makes these little patties puts them on a cookie sheet, cooks them for 25 minutes, and it makes a bun. It's like bread. It is so delicious. Well, now I can have a sandwich. Do you understand what I'm saying? So if I say, so like go back to that example about the woman who wants to live in Alaska and she wants to leave all her kids. It's like, is it because you want to leave the kids? You don't want to be a mom or you don't want to be in this house. It's too chaotic, whatever. Or what is it about Alaska? And And if the bottom line is she just wants freedom, well, then I say, let's create freedom in your current circumstance. Oh, I didn't think I could do that. Like, I just thought this is the only way I can get this thing. So I don't want that thing. Does that make sense? I know I'm a little bit all over the place, but this is when we realize, well, let me tell you this. When we realize that the thing at the bottom, at the base, at the base, which is the emotion, the thing at the base of your desire is an emotion. If you uncover what that emotion is and then use your other faculties, your thoughts, your words, your uh, visualization to create that emotion, other ideas start to come up. So for example, let's say let's say I want to create a business. And at the base of that is because I want freedom. 
and I want freedom. I don't want to work a nine to five. I don't want someone telling me what time I have to be there, what time I have to do things. I don't want that control. And I say, but I want my own business. But then I say, it's really hard to have my own business. And I want to sit at the computer all day long. And now I'm a workaholic and I'm, you know, there are no ending times. And someone goes, why don't you get a job? And I'm like, well, because if I get a job, that I'm tied to, you know, somebody telling me what I have to do. Well, then that person goes, what if the job didn't have that? What if the job gave you freedom? And I'm like, wait, what? What do you mean? Well, what if the boss just said, or the job itself was come in anytime you want and leave when you're done? I'm like, oh, right now I'm piquing my interest. Does that make sense? I want you to think of things that might've been a little confusing, I want you to think of things that way. Think of things right now that you don't want, that you want to change. And then ask yourself why you want to change it. Why don't you like the thing? Get it to the bottom of that emotion. Get all the way to the end, all the way to the bottom. I don't want it because, right? I want this because. When we work at the level of our emotions, it's a whole new way to work. But when we work at the levels of our emotions, we begin to create the life that we want because, because we can create our emotions on purpose. If I'm sitting here today, it's 1140, it's Tuesday, as I'm recording this, and this is going to go out like the end of next week, as I'm sitting here recording this and I go, I want to feel joy today, but it's kind of dreary and it's kind of cold outside. I'm not going to let the weather determine how I feel. And let's say, let's say, I don't know, I was mad at somebody this morning because they didn't do something. I don't know. Well, now it's too bad. I'm not going to feel joy today because now I'm going to feel angry. Okay. I can still choose to feel joy. I can choose to feel joy. People go, well, how can you do that with all these things going on? Because I choose to, because I know that my creative senses, my thoughts and my words are going to create my experience. It's going to contribute to more of the, the yuckiness that's going out in the world. So if I maintain a high vibrational state then I'm going to create more of that. And if I can teach other people how to do that, then they're going to create more of that. And it's going to grow exponentially, elevating the whole planet. That's my purpose, is to elevate the whole planet. That's my purpose, is to take the things that I learn, make them simple, teach them to you. Hopefully you'll do it. And within my podcast and my episodes, you are learning how to manage your emotions through your thoughts, through your beliefs, the stories you tell, the words you use. And you're creating a a new emotional state. With that new emotional state, you create new physical experience. It's kind of cool, I think. So as we're stepping fully into our power, that we have a couple of things to do. One is, well, I'll tell you you the, the, the top three, and then we'll go into a little bit of detail for each of them. My top three areas to fully embrace our power is the first is to have empowering practices is things that we do on a daily basis that put us in control of our life. And I'll go over those. The next is taking courageous action. We have to do something in the physical world, but it can not only courageous action, and I say courageous because it might be different than what you're used to doing. It's waking up. It's stepping out of the subconscious mind and into the conscious mind to make new decisions and new, creating new habits and new ways of doing things so I can create a new a change. I can create something new. We have to do something new if we want something new. And the last one is self-trust, is being able that as we're turning the corner, we're driving a different way to work, we're going to do something different, then it is about trusting that I know what to do. I'm sure all of you are driving. So when we first started driving, when we were younger and we had a parent or a teacher or somebody driving with us, they're like, okay, you're going to go down this road. Okay, come to the stop sign, turn left. All of that was new. You're in this very aware, heightened state. But you know, now that you're a driver, you have gone through lots of weather and different traffic styles and and detours and all this kind of stuff and driven in different areas that now I can pick you up and put you pretty much anywhere in probably in our country or in your normal country because driving here is different than Europe and put you in a different place and say, okay, I want you to drive home. You're like, okay. And you just pull out your phone and you GPS it and you start going. It'd be really easy. That's part of self-trust. But we'll talk about that when we get to it. So empowering practices. 
the very first thing I suggest to my to my clients and people that I that I've come into contact with who want to make change in their life but are afraid. They're afraid of stepping fully into and embracing their inner power is choosing self-care and self-love. You must learn to to fill your own bucket and and to fill your bucket in a way that is unique to you. Filling my bucket is very different than how Amy fills her bucket, let's say. I want to go outside and play. I'm very playful. I'm very young at heart. I love, I have toys. I have little kid books, not little like the cardboard books, but I love Harry Potter. I love Avatar. I love, you know, like the Babysitter Club, like those graphic novels. Like I have those. I have the first, I don't know, 14 of them or however many, I, whatever they, however many there are, that's how many I have. And I just love them. They're fun. I love Tinkerbell, the Tinkerbell book. You know, it's like this crazy thing. You're like, you're 51 years old. Yeah, I don't care. Those are things that bring me joy. I have a giant RC truck. My brother has one and we meet a couple times a year and we go and we drive our trucks and over these ramps and this little this little um, place and these little trails in the woods and we drive our trucks. You're 51 years old. Uh-huh. But it's things that I, that I enjoy. And I do those things because it brings me joy. So I hope you have those things. And I hope that you make time for those things. Back in the day, it was go to school, get good grades, go to college, get good grades, get a job that you love for 45 years. And that's kind of it. Have some kids, get married, buy a house, whatever. And I'm like, I don't really want that kind of a life. Not exactly like that. I mean, I attempted that, but it just didn't align with me. And look at me now right? I don't have an out of the house job. I, I run a podcast and a business and we have Facebook groups and I do events and coaching and I do all this stuff. I love the variety of it. And, you know, I, there's things that I want. There's things, in, you know, that are in my, my dreaming, you know, incubator that I'm working on trying to manifest, you know, that I'm like putting my attention on, but I'm enjoying life. I'm enjoying my time. So I accept, I, I want you to do the same thing. What fills your bucket? What do you like to do? What do you want to spend some time doing that is going to fill your bucket? Another is embrace growth. You know, so many times and so many people are like, yeah, I haven't read a book since high school. I'm like, really? Like I read books all the time, all the time. And I'm constantly learning and growing. If I would have stopped reading, like I went to college, but if I would have stopped reading after college, oh my gosh, I don't even know what my life would be like. And I certainly would not have the life that I have right now. I can guarantee you. I can guarantee you. It was a book that turned me on to becoming a person of personal growth and then eventually spiritual growth that is leading me to where I am today. It was a book that did that. So pick up a book, but but figure out a way for self-growth for you to become a better person. Someone's like, I, you know, I really hate where I work. And I go, well, what else do you want to do? And they're like, I don't know. So well, learn. Like, I don't know, go around and go to different, where do you shop? Where do you go? What, what would it be like to work? You know what I would really love? I'd love to work in a kitchen, but I don't know anything about cooking. Great. Can you learn? Do you have the ability to learn how to do things? Yeah, but everything that comes after that but is just part of the story. Everything that comes after that but is part of the story. We get to the bottom of the story. What's the emotion? Change the emotion. Boom. You change the job. Okay? So embracing growth. All right. Courageous action. Some of this is really about trusting your intuition. I do lots of episodes about intuition and tapping into your inner wisdom, gaining uh, uh, the inner guidance, lots of it. It is about getting quiet. It's about going inward. It's about connecting with your inner self, your higher self. I have some guided meditations on here that you can do that. There's one, um, you have to look for, I'm not sure what number it is, but it's heart space. You go to, I, I think any of the platforms, you go to, you go to my podcast, go into the search, says search these episodes and type in heart space, one word, heart space, and it'll give you that guided meditation. I think there's a couple of them in there. And I just, they're, they're such a great way to help you to begin to tap into your inner guidance. Who are you supposed to be? What are you supposed to do? What's your purpose on this planet? How are you, how are you best living your best life? Trusting your intuition is part of taking action because then once you are aligning with the thing that you want so bad, the desire, whatever the desire is, is you're going to take inspired action. So your intuition is going to start to come alive. Now, I will tell you this. It is going to take some practice. If you've not done it before or when you begin, it is going to take some practice. That's why it's called a meditation practice. But getting connected doesn't always mean you have to be sitting 
you know, with your back straight in, in crisscross applesauce and sitting still and whatever. I mean, you're, my intuition talks to me all day long. And sometimes I stop and I'll just be like, okay, what is the best thing for me to do right now for whatever, whatever I'm trying to achieve? So all of these, my intuition begins to talk to me more and more and more. It's like developing a relationship. When I just walk up to a stranger, they're not going to tell me all of their deeper, darker secrets, but it takes some time. And over time, you get to develop this relationship and deepen your relationship with somebody else. That's no different. If you've not been open to your intuition this whole entire time, they might not tell you everything right from the start. You might need to just be a little bit patient, a little bit quiet, and just wait. And it's going to open up. Every single person has it. Every person does. It's just a matter of if you listen or not. The next is to create small, actionable steps. I worked with a client a long time ago, um, and we were working out, and I gave them some homework, and I said, okay, I want you to do, you know, an hour, I think it was like an hour workout, like, oh my gosh, immediately, I, oh my gosh, I do not have enough time for that kind of a workout, an hour, my kids, my husband, my whatever. I said, okay, what if you did, what if you did a 15 minute workout? Oh, that seems like that's not even going to do anything. I said, great. So I want you to do a 15 minute workout and I want you to dock the workout. Here's, here's the parameters. Go do that. By Monday, back to class, they came and I said, how was it? I said, I did three 30 minute workouts. I said, weird. I only gave you the homework of 15 minutes. I go, yeah, but when I got down there, I just got so motivated and I just kept going. Perfect. Do that. That's what I want you to do with your actionable steps is you just come up with a couple of different things. This is all about taking courageous action. If there's something that you want to do, getting into alignment with it, taking those actionable steps, that inspired action, but then creating a few things here and there. I'm going to work for 15 minutes. I'm going to work out for 15 minutes. I'm going to eat really good for a whole day. I'm going to stop this one thing. I'm going to start this one thing. I'm going to go out in public and try to meet some people for 15 minutes. Anybody can do anything for 15 minutes. We'll probably not hold your breath. Somebody probably could. But do you know what I'm saying? So very few small actionable steps. This is stepping into your power. This is owning your journey. Own your journey. Self-trust. First thing is you've gotten yourself this far. Here you are in life. Here's the things that you have created in your life. You have kids, you're married, you have a house, you have a job, you have a car, you have these things, you have this thing, you have this money, you have this, what are all this stuff is. You've gone to these places, you've seen these things. Here you are, however many years later on this planet, oh, I've come this far. And if you never stepped into your power back then, you'd still be crawling around on the ground. You would still be, you'd still be in diapers. You would still be dating your first grade boyfriend. <laughs> That'd be something, wouldn't it? Right? We keep doing it and we did it when we were in school because basically we were forced to. We wanted to stay in second grade, but we went to third grade because they made us. We wanted to stay in sixth grade, but they made us do that stupid graduation and move on to junior high. Then we had to graduate from high school. We were forced into these growth periods, these places for change, this new environment. Then you go into the workforce or you go to college. You date a few people, you decide if you want to be with those people, you you continue a relationship, you leave the relationship, you get married, okay, we're going to have kids, we're going to buy this house. You're kind of in, you're kind of swept up into life for probably the first 35 years of your life. And now here you are. And now you're like, I think I want something different. So it's about trusting where you are and where you're going. So like I was saying early on with driving is that I'm in this car, and if I were to literally pluck you up and put you in the opposite end of the country, and you're normal to driving, you can drive a car, I would have no problems trusting you that if you live in, you live in Oregon and I pick you up and put you in Miami, in a few days, you're going to make your way home. If, I, if you live in Los Angeles and I want you to drive to, or I pick you up and I put you in New York City, in a few days, you're going to make your way home. That's how this is, Right? trusting yourself along the way. When we look out in the future and we say, okay, I want to create this business or I want this job or I want this relationship or I want to go to this place, that's okay. That's the big dream. We don't need to know all the steps. We need to know just the next couple of steps. We just need to know the next little bit and then trusting ourselves that we're going to figure it out as we go. We're going to figure it out as we go. The next is encouraging words. 
Amy and I have really been working on, I do a, a keynote talk about our words and how our words create and how we use those words to create our emotional experience and how we heal the body using our words. And we've been really in using encouraging words with each other. We get kind of frustrated. We're working with technology. And like I've already said, mentioned a couple of times, my, my platform where I put my podcast is kind of going away and changing drastically. So I need to find a new platform. And so that's been kind of... It's been kind of frustrating. It's a little eye-opening. I'm trying to look at it with curiosity. And some days it works really well and it's okay. I don't mean the the episode, the, the platform. I'm not using it yet. But trying to, I'm going to use this as divine intervention and go, okay, how do I want to work with this thing that's going on? You know, div, you know the divine is like, okay, we're going to, we're basically forcing you, Jen, and your business and your podcast into a new space. Either you quit your podcast or you create a new, you create a new version of this. I'm like, okay, I think I'll go with that, right? But it is using encouraging words that we say to each other as well as we say to ourselves. And that is like, it's okay. We're going to get this figured out. It's okay. We're going to go. You're in Miami heading back towards Oregon and you're like, okay, it's okay. It's a traffic jam. It's a detour. I know how to drive on a road. I could stop. I could ask for directions. I could wait, you know, an hour for the traffic to cease a little bit. You know, there's things that you can do to problem solve. But I'm on my way home. I'm on my way to this thing, this desire. Does that make sense? Encouraging words are so helpful when it comes to how our body starts to show up. If I say something like, I hate this and this is so stupid, I can't believe my podcast platform's going away, blah, blah, blah. What is there to create? Nothing. You're kinking the hose. But if I say something like, it's okay, Jen, it's going to be better than ever. Oh, there's flow there. There's there's flow when I say that, like, it's okay. I just say, it's okay, breathe. We're going to figure this out. Something's going to come of this that's going to be amazing. That if this change didn't happen, then I wouldn't be there, wherever the there is. Okay? And the last, I kind of already said this one, but is reflect on past success. Look at where you've come. Look at how far you've gone. And, and looking to go, you know, I went through this thing whatever the, this thing is. I went through this divorce. I went through this loss. I lost this job. I was out of money this one time. I lived in my car. I've never lived in my car, though I love sleeping in my car. I've never lived in my car. But I went through this stuff. And here I am. Here I am right here. So I know that I can get through it. I know that I can begin to trust myself. So here's the four, a three again, to fully embrace your inner power. Empowerment practices. This is everything about with self-care and self-love all is everything to deal with taking care of you, taking care of your physical body, that's eating well, drinking, drinking water, fueling your body with the energy that it needs to be at its optimum performance. That is, that is taking care of it so you can feel good, okay? Taking care of your mental energy and most importantly, your emotional energy. Is taking care of that's that's meditating, it's getting outside, it's walking in nature, it's it's breathing, it's introspection, it's journaling, it's visualization, it's intent. It's all of these that help me to I am not a victim of my circumstance. I am not I am not a victim of the conditions in my life. I have this big dream and I'm heading towards it. Okay. And then the next is courageous action taking steps that move you just a little bit here and there. And those little actions could be one step, could be a short time frame, just a tiny little bit. And the last one is self-trust. Self-trust. I think trust is very, very important. It's trusting the universe. It's trusting your ability. It's trusting in the process and understanding that life is a mystery and it is a process. And there's some of us that are just a few miles ahead of you trying to help you along in your path. And I hope that this episode and even the last few episodes, if you've listened to them, are just giving you little tiny nuggets along the way. If you haven't yet, if you want, I would love to get any feedback from you on things that you would love to have a part of my podcast or things that I could include, topics I can talk about, problems that you're having that you would love some insight on. One of the things I think I want to do in the new podcast when I move over to a different platform is start taking questions from you, the listeners. And if I can, and, and you'll let me know within the write-up, you know, if you make a post on Facebook or you send me an email, say, hey, here's this question. Let me know also if I can mention your name. 
And I would love that. I think that that would be a really fun way to start engaging with you and having you become part of my community. thank you for listening. Your support means the world to me. I want to let you in on a little secret, a decision that I made. I am never going to have ads during the episodes. This will ensure that the show stays uninterrupted and in the flow. However, to keep the lights on and the tape rolling and allow me to continue dedicating my time and energy to the podcast, I am asking for your support. And to do that, I have introduced a $5 a month membership Your contribution keeps the episodes coming and ensuring continuous improvement in content, quality, and delivery in bringing you those valuable nuggets. This is not only to support me and the show, but also an investment in your continued spiritual journey. See the show notes below for membership instructions and other ways to donate to this program. Thanks again for listening and for being an amazing support.